Welcome to another episode of Focus on Tomorrow. My name is Jervon. Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. You can find us on the web at www.focus/on/tomorrow.org and you can email us at info@focus/on/tomorrow.org. At Today I have Nora from um, Amnesty International Ch International Chicago. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Nora Mostri. I am a local member. Uh, I'm I'm a member of the local group of Chicago Amnesty International. Well, today we've invited Nora to tell us a little bit about Amnesty and their mission. Um, what is Amnesty International Chicago's mission? We are a group of volunteers, and we do. We do motivate people to uh, facilitate discussion, facilitate discussion about, about human rights, and uh, take action to support international uh, Amnesty International campaign for the issue of human, human rights uh, across the country and across the world. Um, what does it mean when a country remains in a state of human rights and humanitarian crisis? It means that uh, the the crisis that they have has not been improved or even getting worse. So, um, I guess, what is a humanitarian right then? What are some rights that humans have? I guess? Human rights, uh, a human being has a right to eat, to live, to have a home, uh, to have education. And you can continue, continue on on this, like anything that we expect, we, we have for granted here uh, in the United States, I guess. So, um, I guess my question is, who would who is providing these human rights to the world? Is there like a specific country that controls, or is it like the United Nations that? United Nations is supposed to uh, to keep an eye on any any human rights violation, and uh, Amnesty International and human rights uh, organization that help document any violation and provide it to you and to take uh, to take action and to enforce human rights uh, wherever it's not uh, enforced. And uh, if the country does not does not cooperate with the human rights law, they they take it to the international criminal criminal court. And what happens then? When they should do their investigation if it's, uh, you know, any, any violation happened, they should take the action. It's up to them, like, nothing is uh, really applied. Oh, wow. So, um, when, how did Amnesty get started and when? Amnesty uh, started in, uh, in, the, in London long time ago I don't have a specific year but um, we are a local group here we just focus on some issues in Chicago going on in Chicago and focus uh, on other stuff that happening around the world as a Amnesty group uh, we are group 113 we are we focuses more about Syria and about the gun violation and human right uh, you know uh, gun violation and other stuff uh, going around the country can you describe the history of the current four-year crisis in Syria that you've been involved in? Yes, uh, actually, uh, it started. It, it was inspir inspiration with uh, what's going on. What what do you call in Arab Spring? What happens in uh, Egypt, Tunisia, Libya? A group of activists organized a, a Facebook group. Um, a Facebook uh, face group uh, group. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, a fa Facebook page uh, that calls it uh, Syrian Revolution, and uh, they called for a protest that um, a peaceful protest to go on and to re uh, to ask for human rights to be given to the people to end the uh, violation that the Assad family has been doing uh, for the last 50 years with the uh, Syrian people, like the uh, the the arrests for the people, everything was going on that people were afraid to talk about. And uh, the the first day they gave was February 5th. No one showed up in the streets of the area of the pro protest because people were afraid. At that time, there was no, the Egyptian revolution has not succeeded yet. So people were so afraid. Um, the organizers like rescheduled for March 15. On March 15, the the G Egyptian people were six, uh, successfully 
throwing out like Mubarak. And so the people were encouraged. They feel there's a hope to throw up, you know, get, gain their human rights that have been um, stolen from them since Assad took the, over the country. So what they did, um, a group of activists went in Damascus, all city of Damascus, in a peaceful protest. This protest were, um, were uh, dismissed like vile, you, you know, they arrested people, they beaten people, but some activists were able to get one video of the of that uh, protest, and they uploaded to Facebook. And uh, in the meantime, there was a group of kids in Dara. Dara is uh, one city in Syria that's that's uh, very close to Jordan and it's Syria, and it. Um, they were, they did gravity on the wall, and on the wall of their school, saying that people want to topple the regime, inspired by what they hear in TV. So they were arrested and uh, tortured. Their family went to ask about them, and they were told, like, you go make a new kids. We're not giving you your kids back. So the people were so angry. They went to the streets. Also, they, they. Um, they were asking for their kids, they're asking for their rights. And they, on March 18, 2011, the first person killed by the security forces of Syria. And this is when, like, was the inspiration for the entire country to go protest after protest after protest. Some of them were successful, some of them were, you know, they couldn't even show a picture even though they did protest because the security was so high and you, if you hold the camera it's like you are holding a weapon mm -hmm. so uh, many people get arrested many people get killed the protest continues to be uh, peaceful for eight months and then after that like uh, they involved the army some of the army people like they get defected from the army and try, uh, refuse to kill their own people so this is when the arms start to get involved. Um, now, after four years of, you know, a brutal brutality of the regime, uh, barrel pumps happening, everything. Um, you can, if you can think of anything, you know, rape. You cannot think of any human rights violation did not happen in Syria. Everything has happened, either by Assad or by the armed group now, uh, ISIS and other. Um, Many uh, many group get involved in this, and unfortunately, the, the the international community who allowed this to happen because no one listened to the Syrian, no one helped them. They've been asking for help for four years. No one uh, no one uh, was able to help. Ten uh, more than ten million in, uh, are displaced internally displaced, and in the countries around Syria, like Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan, some in Iraq. And these people can, uh, they don't have anything. They live under the tents. They live under the, they live, actually they started to live under the tree. Now they have caves also, like some people they have, they, they stay in the tents or their home. And when there's the pearl pump comes, they go under the cave so they don't get killed. A lot of children don't, uh, did not, uh, a lot of children did not, uh, go to school for four years just because no one there to to help them go to school um i would like to remind everyone that this is a call-in show you can call in at 312-738-1060 um why hasn't anyone helped why hasn't the international community gotten involved because i know that the u.s has been um we have forces in iraq so i'm assuming that we would be aware of what's happening in Syria since they're all their neighboring countries. So, mm -hmm. I wonder why hasn't anyone helped? Yeah, the Syrian people try to get help. They try to ask for help, but no one wanted. Like every time the UN, the UN try um, have a meeting, they don't. China and Russia come to veto that. Um, veto anything any action can be taken now the united states they having on the they're arming again against isis only and we appreciate that but ha killing you know um having them 
against ISIS without against Assad, it's not going to do anything because Assad is facilitating ISIS. He's helping them financially by purchasing the oil they are controlling in the country. You know, you can, I can tell you one thing. Like he did, he did, he did not touch Hala Aleppo until ISIS. Until ISIS pull out of Aleppo, then he start sending his barrel bomb. Before that, like ISIS controlled Aleppo for a few months, they didn't. He didn't do anything. The day they they pull off, he started sending their his uh, barrel bomb. So they he, they're helping Assad in other way around. So any action against ISIS without action against Assad is nothing really, just wasting of resources. Um, all this out, but how has Am Amnesty been? Um, how has Amnesty International Chicago helping the, refugee, the refugees of this crisis? We try to uh, raise awareness by organizing events. We organized many events at DePaul University, at University uh, UIC. We held panel discussion. We um, we hold a screening for uh, one of the amazing documentary, Return to Homs, that shows people on the ground how they live the siege in Homs. Uh, we um, we hosted one of the eyewitnesses who was in Madamia, like one of the city uh, in, Dam in Damascus, who witnesses the chemical uh, gas attack, which happened like many many times, and that was the the actually red line that Obama mentioned, and I said crossed that no one did anything about it. So we try to raise awareness. We help. Uh, we try to. Um, Amnesty International did uh, with Syria campaign just to social soldiers solidarity with the people of Syria because they think they have been forgotten. We did open uh, open to Syria. This is about the refugee. Um, also, Amnesty International uh, released uh, reports every um, month or two or every um, like major crisis. Like they uh, they released one on um, about what's going on in Aleppo last month and uh, just yesterday one about the refugees uh, released so why hasn't all this like violence against the syrian people been on the news because i feel like if it was on the news then more people would know about it and people would probably protest to try to get our government to get involved and go and help so i'm wondering why do you think this isn't on the media on cnn or Unfortunately, the media pick and choose, like, what do they want to have? Like, if there's ISIS terrorists, they talk about terrorists, so people will think, oh, Syrian, they think about terrorism. They don't think about, like, people who are ref refugees, they don't think about what's going on, what's the background, they don't know. Whenever any any peaceful protest, they don't, they don't care about it. Um, but like when it's like for that, like in their interest, like they, they care about, they think people will hear about the terrorists. They don't think they are going to hear about the um, peaceful protests. So unfortunately, like the, they pick and choose. We try to tweet to them. We try to write to them. Here in Chicago, we were holding a weekly protests uh, just to make their uh, the people of Syria voice heard. But no one was really... Um, Present. getting that you know also one time like after the chemical attack a lot of people because because they uh, as I said crossed the uh, red line a lot of people unfortunately went to the street here in uh, Chicago and Naperville and they they just they didn't want our government to take an action in Syria because the of the bad experience in Iraq. They said, we don't trust our government. We don't want them. We understand. We we went. We actually divided ourselves and we went to talk to the people and told them about the history of what's going on in Syria. But the people said, like, we understand, but we don't trust our government. So because of the crisis happened after the Iraq, like economic crisis, because of, you know, people, I understand people care about their living, but if we don't care about other countries, they, eventually this is going to come and hunt us because human rights violation anywhere, if it doesn't, if we don't take action, it's going to come to us. Why do you think it's important for the world to know about the crisis in Syria? The same thing, like, if we don't take action, it's going to come and hunt us. If uh, I think about the world and many people, like, they do that, like, if they're activists, oh, many activists, like, on amnesty, this is why they're on amnesty, they think. Any human being, life matter. Any, 
in any country, in any color, in any race, in any religion, like they matter. So, and eventually we uh, the world, the world is a small village. So it's gonna come and hunt us if we don't work. And we can see it now in ISIS, like ISIS trying to recruit from all over the world. If we don't take action on Syria, this is gonna continue. It's gonna be bad on us. And actually the, the international community, because of careless they they did not uh, this is what happening now otherwise if we if the international community interfered from the beginning we wouldn't be here we wouldn't have like that many people uh, without homes without uh, education what do you think about like million of people without school like educated people are not the same as like people who did not have that chance to learn they're not gonna think the same way. They're gonna be bad on the society, on the on the world, uh, for everyone. It's not good. So, how do we hold the Syrian government accountable for their actions? Amnesty International trying to document everything, every human rights ab abuse, and eventually the war is gonna end. Nothing's gonna continue. So, uh, hopefully, we're gonna present this to the uh, international Crim criminal court, and uh, they're gonna get. Uh, they're gonna get the criminals. They're, they're gonna bring bring everything to justice. So how is Amnesty International of Chicago um, collecting all these evidence and collecting all these um, human rights that were being violated? How are you guys doing that? We speak to the people on the ground. Uh, there are some volunteers who speaks to, who speaks to the people in inside Syria, either with telephone, Skype. Um, emails some people go on the ground to the uh, neighboring city for um, a while now no one went into syria because it's so dangerous but before they uh, there are people who went there and uh, many people get interviewed and now also it's so easy easy because the refugees started to come here to uh, united states so a lot of stories coming out in the news has any organization stepped in to reduce or prevent these opposing attacks? No one really can do anything on the ground except for the UN. UN has to do their duty and enforce their human rights. Why do you think the UN hasn't been involved? Because I feel like this is, I feel like it's prominent and a lot of people are dying already. And like, I feel like they already know, but I don't know why they're not like doing anything about it though. Yeah, they don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, they just talk, talk, talk. They didn't do anything. Have you guys reported, talked to the UN about anything? Yes, we try to give them any, everything, but it hasn't get any response. What role does Amnesty International play in bringing attention to attacks like these and possibly preventing them? We cannot do more than documentation and awareness and help, uh, encouraging people to take action. Uh, you know, either sign petition, like talk about it, like help the. Usually, people care about other people, not like government. So, if people like everyone take an action, then eventually, the government has to listen to the people. They cannot ignore us forever. No, they can't. Yeah, because <laughs> we make up the government. They have uh -huh. to listen to us. They're supposed to help us yes. people. Mm -hmm. So, I guess, I mean, what can normal people like me or like students or kids like us can do to help? Because I feel like I feel like a lot of organization they just target the um adult or mm -hmm. like the older audience. Are you guys targeting kids and teenagers too? Actually, most of the amnesty activists. They are students. Oh, this is how we uh, they facilitate like our events and uh, the university, people, UIC, and other places. So, um, like, if anyone wants to get involved in Chicago, they can go to our Facebook page. We have uh, Amnesty International Chicago. They can message us there, and we have a lot of information about Syria and other human rights violations. And um, there are a lot of petitions in our website, like um, uh, www.amnestyusa.org. Also, they can email us at group113 at aiusa.org. And we can, we can uh, help them help us. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Um, Amnesty International and other monitoring groups have documented attacks by arm opposing groups on residential neighborhoods such as Aleppo. How do we hold the opposition groups accountable? Just the same thing as we do for uh, any other group, uh, government or anywhere, documenting those and hold the, keep the documentation, give it to the International Criminal Court, uh, do awareness. We, we cannot do anything on the ground, but we can do documentation. So how did you get involved in Amnesty International? Actually, the Syrian, the Syrian revolution get me there. Um, in 2011, we organized a global event about Save Our Children. And uh, Amnesty International was one of our guests. Plain Minimum, the, our leader, uh, group leader, he did uh, come and talk about Amnesty International involvement, about uh, uh, children in Syria. Uh, and then after this, I, uh, I attended every meeting and we tried to work together to help the people in Syria and to help other people around the world who uh, did not have their rights. Does Amnesty International work in partnership with other organizations such as UNICEF? And mm -hmm. We do have some uh, some organizations. We are open for any organization. So a lot of our meetings, they, we have some uh, organization. I can speak about uh, Syrian organization like SAMS, uh, the Syrian Medical Syrian American Medical Society, and there's a new foreign organization they care about, um, they take care of the new refugees arriving uh, from Syria, uh, Syrian community, Syrian American community, and uh, the uh, this organization actually work closely with Amnesty to provide, we, they provide us information, we provide them uh, with our reports, and we try to keep on contact uh, we work in, with other also uh, organization, local organization about the local issues, and um, we did we did uh, organize. We actually also work with the uh, the Cat Foundation, one of the organization we they sponsor some of our events. So yeah, like we're open for any organization. Any anyone wants to do something good, like <laughs> we would like to partner with them. Amnesty International has also conclu concluded that many non-state armed groups have engaged in abductions and hostage taking as well as the arbitrary detention, torture and other mistreatment of, prisoner in, in, of prisoners in Aleppo. How has Amnesty International helped with this? We documented those abuses and we expect the criminal court to do an action about this. Um, in class we talked about the Geneva Convention and mm -hmm. the rights that are um, provided to, you know, prisoners of war and sit, well, per civilians that are in this, in that situation. Has the Syrian government, is the Syrian government in violation of the Geneva Convention? We think that we documented some uh, serious issue that's involved a war, as a war crime, but we leave this up to the International Criminal Court to identify that, but we, li we believe there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of violation and uh, war crimes happening in Syria. Oh, you talked a lot about the um, international court. So, is it like one country has their own attorney and they just battle it out, or like how how do you know the process and how it goes? Uh, not really, <laughs> attorney. But I know they should. It's in Geneva. They supposed it's in Netherlands, and they supposed to um, care about the human and the, the war crimes. They any war crimes are taking to them uh, but I know I don't know the process I'm not an attorney but mm -hmm. the, the countries each have attorneys or like mm. I, d I don't I don't completely understand the process <laughs> I don't either <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the details like I <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching again I'm Jervon and this was our wonderful guest Nora mm -hmm. um, we have about one minute left to wrap up so thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you being here and thank answering you. all of our questions. Thank you and ex thank you for having me. Um, this is Focus on Tomorrow.
Focus on Tomorrow is a non-profit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. You can find us on the web at www.focus-on-tomorrow.org and you can email us at info at focus-on-tomorrow.org. Thank you. Thank you.